Hi, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. This is part two of a two-part tutorial on how to edit the general preferences in Photoshop Elements. In part one, we started at the top of the General Preferences dialog box and just kept going down the list. I've received lots of great feedback from that first part, so if you haven't seen it yet, be sure to check it out. I decided to break it into two videos because I got about halfway through the preferences and realized it was going to go pretty long and I didn't want people to feel like it was too much info for one sitting. So let's go over to Elements and pick up where we left off. Let's see what's next in the preferences. It says use shift key for tool switch. Okay, and it's off by default. So let's close out of that. Let me show you what that means. Let's go to the lasso tool. If you look down in the tool options, there's actually three lasso tools. There's the regular lasso tool, the magnetic lasso tool, and the polygonal lasso tool. The keyboard shortcut for the lasso tool is the letter L. If I go to the move tool and press L, it switches to the lasso tool. And if I press L again, it goes to the magnetic lasso tool. And if I press L again, it goes to the polygonal lasso tool. Every time I press L, it cycles through the different lasso tools. So let's go back to our preferences. That preference says use shift key for tool switch. So let's turn it on and say OK. Let's press the letter L again. Well, when I press it this time, it doesn't switch to the magnetic lasso and the polygonal lasso. It just stays on the regular lasso tool because that's what it was on originally. That preference said um, something about using the shift key. So let me hold down the shift key and press L. And now, as long as I hold down the shift key, it cycles through those tools. So that's what that uh, preference is all about. Let's go back into preferences and look at the next item, which is zoom with scroll wheel. It's pretty self-explanatory. I have, uh, I think they call it the Magic Mouse by Apple. I have set up to zoom. So let me click OK and enlarge my image. And now if I use the scroll feature on my mouse, I can scroll around with it. Let's go back into Preferences and let's turn that scroll wheel on again and say OK. And now when I use my scroll wheel, instead of scrolling, it zooms in or out. So that's what that does. Our next item is Enable Soft Notifications. And to tell you the truth, I had no idea what that preference meant. I looked online and I couldn't find anything about it. And finally I went to, I went to Adobe's help forum and I asked the question, what does enable soft notifications mean in Photoshop Elements general preferences? I want to give a shout out to the person who answered the question for me and they go under the name 99john, J-O-N. So thank you for that. And it turns out what that means, let's close out of this so I can show you. If I, um, let's say we put that other image on our first one as a new layer, and then I decide I don't want that, so I'm going to do Command-Z to undo it, we get a little pop-up message telling us what we're undoing. So let me press Command-Y to redo it. And see right there, Redo Place Photo and I'll undo it again. So that's what that soft notification is. It's just that little message telling me what operation I'm doing. So let's go back in and turn that off and click OK. And now I'll put that layer back and I'm going to undo it. And this time we don't get that little pop-up notice notification. So let's go back into our preferences and look at our next item, which is called Enable Crop Preselection. When you have this enabled and you choose the Crop tool, it automatically overlays a suggested crop on your photo. Let's click OK 
go to the toolbox and click the crop tool see how it overlaid that crop suggestion if I were to click the check mark to accept that it would crop away all this grayed out area of my photo if you look down in the tool options there's actually four different crop suggestions and I don't like the crop suggestions because chances are I'm not going to want one of them that they suggest. Let's uh, cancel out of that and go back to our preferences and turn that preference off and click OK. And now I'll just um, switch to a different tool and then back to the crop tool and you can see it doesn't automatically give me a suggestion now I can just click and drag to crop it however I want if I don't like my original one I can just adjust it by using these handles here and then click OK when I get the crop that I like I'm gonna undo that before I forget but I was gonna say I've also read online that people have complained that having crop suggestions turned on tends to slow down their computer when they're working in elements. I usually leave that off. And now we're done with the options section of the general preferences and we just have these uh, three buttons at the bottom. The first one is actually one that I use quite a bit and that I advise other people to use quite a bit when they send me questions about elements acting kind of wacky in one way or another. And it can range anything from the tool icon not looking like the tool that they're using or some operation just not working the way it's supposed to. A lot of times what, what's happened in those cases is that the preference file for elements has become corrupted. It's actually quite common it'll fix a lot of problems when elements goes haywire it reads reset preferences on next launch if I click that it says click OK to reset your preferences on the next launch of Photoshop elements this cannot be undone so it gives you a chance to cancel out if you want but I'm gonna say OK the next time I relaunch Photoshop Elements, it will rebuild the preference file and hopefully whatever problem you may have had will be taken care of. But just so you know, it affects more than just the preferences that you've chosen from the preference window. If you've set things like a feather amount or you have a certain brush set or you have your panels arranged in a certain way, it'll set all those back to Photoshop Elements default settings. Okay, the next box is Reset All Warning Dialogs. Let's look at an example of what a warning dialog is. I'm going to click OK to close the General Preferences box. Go back to our photo bin and I'm going to add this as a new layer. And let's say that I want to delete that layer so I click on the trash can. and instead of deleting the layer a dialog box appears asking me to confirm that I really want to delete the layer in addition to confirming yes or no to my last action there's also a box I can check that says don't show again and it's that don't show again box that identifies this as a warning dialog that was referred to in the general preferences if I click on the box to put a check in it I won't be shown this warning dialog the next time I click on the trash icon in the layers panel. It will just go ahead and do it. So let's click yes and then let's add a layer again and now let's click on the trash can and this time it just automatically deleted it without asking me so it didn't show me that warning box again and that's what that preference is all about. If I were to click Reset All Warning Dialogs, it would reset my warning dialogs that I had clicked the Don't Show Again box to uncheck, and those warning boxes would pop up again asking for confirmation. Finally, let's look at our last preference, which is labeled Reset Auto Smart Tone Learning. Let's start by first seeing what Auto Smart Tone Learning is. I'll go up to the Enhance menu, 
and the second item down is called Auto Smart Tone. So I'll click on that and it brings up this pretty big dialog box. It makes an automatic adjustment to the photo. That's why it has auto in the name. And down at the bottom, there's this button you can use to see the before and after. So here's what my original photo looked like. And this is what it looked like after it made the auto adjustment. In the middle of the dialog box is this icon that Adobe calls a joystick and there's a thumbnail of your photo in each corner of the dialog box. You can use the joystick to further adjust your photo. If I wanted the photo to be lighter, I could click and drag the joystick down towards the lower right corner because that shows a brighter thumbnail. Next to the before and after button is a little icon that represents an option menu. When I click on it, we see that there's two options available, and they're both checked on by default. The top one is called Learn From This Correction. What that does is it tells Auto Smart Tone to remember the type of adjustment I made to this general type of image. So the next time I open the Auto Smart Tone dialog box on a photo with similar tonal values to this one, it will apply that same adjustment to the new photo. Now, I don't personally use this feature for photo editing, but since it's what the option in the general preferences is referring to, I had to explain what it is. I'm going to cancel out of the dialog box. And let's go back to general preferences. So, that last button resets Auto Smart Tone Learning. In other words, if you used Auto Smart Tone and had Learn From This Correction checked, you would click this button and it would forget about what previous corrections you had okayed, and it would go back to using the default adjustment. So that wraps up the second and final part of how to edit the general preferences. I hope you found it helpful. Until next time, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com saying take care.